Teachers of Reddit, what was the most annoying thing you ever had to deal with in class? Kid using a ruler or any other object to reflect light onto the board or your face. It's just irritating. But they act like chimps who have just discovered fire, and giggle like there will never be anything funnier. I love my job, though. Story 2. Inability to fill in the attendance register. 30 in class, only 27 names on register. Who hasn't filled in their name? We all have! No you haven't. Who hasn't filled it in? Silence. Start asking individually until register is finally filled in. Amazing how people will argue that they filled in their names when they haven't. Story 3. University level, so I'm not sure if this counts. But he would come to class and watch television shows on his laptop. I don't have an attendance requirement. I asked him to please just watch them outside instead of coming to class. He said he was very sorry and would not do it again. After that, he was still pretty clearly watching shows in class on his laptop with the sound down, but would click away any time I came near. I just don't understand. I also don't get it. You're in university. You're paying to be there. Who are you? Are, do you think you're, like, winning in something? You think you're, oh, I'm, I'm tricking the teacher. Probably not, right? So what's the end goal here? If you're gonna do this, just don't go to class. Story 4. My mom taught middle school kids with high-functioning autism for a decade. For her, it was a toss-up between the boy who wouldn't stop pleasuring himself in class and the girl who refused to wear pads during her period and just bled all over chairs. Edit to answer some questions. The boy wasn't just whipping it out in class. He did it through his pants or through the pockets. They managed to curb the behavior by banning him from wearing sweatpants and giving him safe objects to fidget with, because I think it was a fidget habit for him. A fidget cube would have gone a long way to helping, I'm sure, but this was 13 plus years ago. Chronic pleasuring is definitely really common in autistic kids. It's just that most of them aren't this dedicated. The girl hated wearing pads because of sensory defensiveness, which is common in autistic kids. I sort of understood where she was coming from a little bit. Pads feel like diapers when you're not used to them, even when you're neurotypical. If you have sensory issues, I'm sure it's so much worse. At first, her mom kept her home on her period, then eventually just sent her to school with a cushion and a towel for her to sit on to avoid ruining school property. Eventually, she was pulled out of school and was sent elsewhere. She was pretty bright and academically did well, but she was some distance beyond socially inept and clearly needed help. These two were unusual. Most kids weren't quite this bad, just a bit odd. Story 5. I'm a computer science teacher. This is important, as my students usually have access to a computer. One student likes to be hated by the other students. So he found an online tone generator and set it to a frequency that older people wouldn't be able to hear, but it would massively annoy his classmates. Thankfully, I'm not particularly old and have fairly tuned in hearing from a background in audio engineering, so I could just mute his computer. The most annoying part is that if he put as much effort into his work as he did in creative ways of screwing with people, he could do really well. Story 6. Former primary and secondary school teacher here based in the UK. My vote goes towards incompetent or robotic senior management. Also, their policies. Making you do reports during holidays. Except it's worse because they open the system a week or so before said holiday. Meaning technically they're not making you do them in the holidays. Not employing cover supervisors, so you end up using your free period to cover the lessons of your absent colleagues. Thereby building resentment toward them. Not being allowed to sit down at all during lessons. Spontaneously sticking their head in the classroom to see if you need any support. See if you're sitting down, basically. Abuse of the term, support. You know what? This stuff makes sense. The most annoying things in class are probably just the stupid rules that are sometimes imposed on you. Not the kids at all. Fair play, OP. Story 7. I teach English in a Chinese kindergarten, nursery. Annoying may be a tad strong, but it is unfortunately inconvenient and counterproductive when the local teacher is over-eager. Some are taking an active part in the class, which is great, but oftentimes they step in to correct the kids and do so incorrectly, pronunciation particularly. Also due to the different teaching approach and I guess impatience, they tend to push the kids and stress them out to give an answer without giving enough time to think and come up with something. I'd rather the kid give me an answer by themselves, however incorrect, and then we can correct it together. That's much better than the teacher pushing or giving the answer and destroying the kid's confidence in the process. Story 8. Just how much of a danger small children are to themselves and others. We've got to catalog every playground injury, which is understandable in theory, but is actually incredibly time-consuming. And the kids have been taught to find a grown-up for everything. So one minute you'll be applying ice to someone who ran into a post, and then filling in the same forms for the kid who wanted a band-aid because they have a hangnail. Story 9. Once during a year 10 maths class I was teaching, there was a really bad smell. Like, it smelt straight up like crap. At first I thought someone just farted, but it was stronger than that. 
the students started to move away from the smell, and it turned out they were all moving away from one student. It turned out that one of the students in the class struggled from incontinence, and had actually pooped his pants during my maths class. I never thought I'd have to deal with that considering I only teach senior high school students. Story 10. There's a requirement in New York of how much seat time you have to have to pass certain classes. Like you need X number of labs to take the science regents or whatever. Some stupid parents and students use all their sick days, let's say they get 14 before truancy or failing, when they don't feel like coming to school. By February, they're usually cutting it close and come in every day. The annoying part? They come in sick all the damn time. I've had kids go to the ER with the flu at night, and then show up to school with a mask and a 103 fever the next morning. Or they have some vomiting bug and take up the trash can and bolt in the middle of my class. Or they can't see with pink eye in both eyes. Or they blow their nose slash sniffle every 30 seconds. The worst part is the disruption and then infecting everyone else. If you try to send them out, they freak out. And parents call saying the school is out to get their kid, and threatens to pull them out so they count as a dropout. Schools get flagged by the state for dropout rates. Other than that, it's just when kids decide to act all tough and try to tell you off. About once every four to five years, I get one who decides they're gonna try to be cool and put me in my place. Story 11. Early elementary art teacher here. I was in the middle of teaching a kindergarten class and noticed one of the kids was passing gas. Like, a lot. Luckily, it was warm enough outside, so I cracked a couple windows without missing a step in my lesson. Or bringing more attention to the smell. A few minutes later, I realized the smell is growing at an exponential rate, and I had that terrible thought. Someone crapped their pants. And now they're either too embarrassed to come tell me in front of their peers, or scared they will get in trouble. Remember, they're five. So... I decide my plan of attack will be to continue teaching my lesson as planned, but actively walk around my classroom with an extra heightened sense of smell so I can literally sniff out the kid that did this, while still acting normal around all the students. Sure enough, I get to one of the tables and this kid just smells terrible. It's obvious they did it. I get the kid started on their art projects and ask this girl into the hall to have a chat. I ask if she pooped her pants and she says, no. I ask her if she's sure she didn't and she says, yeah, she's sure. We go back inside the class and the smell gets even worse. A couple minutes later, I ask the same girl back out in the hall. I tell her, I know, and she needs to go to the school nurse to get a change of clothes. After some convincing, I get her out of there, and get things cleaned up on the sly so that way a lot of the other kids won't find out what happened, and therefore wouldn't tease the girl later. That was a rough day. Honestly, dealing with young kids, this is my number one fear. And admittedly, I don't deal with young kids a lot, but like, it's one of the reasons I don't want to. I'm like, I don't know what to do about this, man. It's a situation I just simply do not want to deal with. I do not have the, the faculties to. I can't explain it. I'm ill-equipped as a person. And I recognize it's mostly an irrational fear. But it exists. Story 12. I've had a few. Some common and some irregular, so I'll make a list. For context, I teach English in a non-English speaking country. Not all of these are in-class things, but I figured I'd write them anyway. 1. When you explain something to the student, ask if they have questions and they say no. Two minutes later it comes up again, they ask the same question again. You explain again. The cycle continues for about an hour, wherein they absorb absolutely nothing. 2. Hands in pants, hands in nose, hands in butt, then they want a high five. 3. Putting no effort into writing legibly, then being surprised they can't read their own writing. 4. You didn't give me homework. Yes, I did. I explained it to you in class and showed you examples. I sticky noted it, I highlighted it. I had you write it on the homework sheet I made for you because you always say this, you had homework. 5. Why aren't you giving my child homework? I am. If your child is lying to you and saying they don't have any, that's an issue you need to deal with. If you want me to tell you what the homework is, please give me your contact or come in to check on your child's progress after class. I will be happy to talk to you. 6. Unrealistic expectations. So many parents want their children to suddenly be intermediate level speakers in a few months, with only one lesson a week, and then pressure the kid unfairly. 7. Screaming. Kids scream all the time because they think it's funny. I get it, kids are kids. But when you're not allowed to use their native language to discipline them and their beginning speakers, it creates a pretty maddening situation. Not the fault of the kids. I love teaching kids, so most stuff can be viewed in a positive or humorous way. But these are some that really get on my nerves. Overall though, it's really fun. Story 13. I'm not a teacher, but if you're not familiar with Kahoot, it's a game where all the students go on their phones or a laptop and enter a game code. You look at the projector to answer the questions on the phone. However, there is a feature that allows you to choose a custom name, and it has no filter, unless the teacher manually removes them. Examples of names we use include the teacher's full name, I want to kashoot myself, and pretty much any swear word that comes to mind. And then when some kids start getting bored after a couple of games, a handful of students will open a website. On that website, they can make up to 10,000 accounts, log 
respond to this Kahoot server, you often get a sudden surge of accounts called Somalian Pirates or Mike Hunt flooding into this game and beating everyone. You know, maybe I'm still in grade 9 in my head, because my brain liked I want to kashoot myself way too much. Like, that's- am, am I crazy? That's funny, right? That's an actually funny thing. Maybe I'm just- maybe I'm just stupid. Anyway, moving on. Story 14. I'm an English teacher in a UK high school. I've been teaching full-time for about six months now. And for me, at least, the annoying things in the classroom are never just the one-off events. For me, the most annoying thing is the apathy of the average parent. And this translates into the apathy of the average student. Though some genuinely don't care, most parents want their children to succeed, but either do not help their child to do so or even actively work against them in some foolish way. The problem then is basically this. Without constant support and encouragement at home, a child is unlikely to succeed to a high degree. I'm fully aware that parents have jobs and commitments of their own, but school simply cannot be the entire delivery system for education. Even a tiny bit of extra work at home would reap huge benefits in the long term. The other big frustration for me is that, quite frequently, the best you get out of some students is their minimum effort. Story 15. I've been teaching in a North London secondary school for almost 10 years now. I love the job, but the annoying things have to be... A. When you finally get students settled and working quietly and suddenly a spider, bee, or fly appears or it starts to snow. It's game over at that point if you have less than 20 minutes of the lesson left. B. Younger first-year students, 11 years old, who will walk into the classroom and want to talk to you and shout, Sir, 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 over and over again. Like, just go sit down and be quiet. It's not so bad if it's one or two, but when you have ten of them trying to get your attention at the same time, it gets a bit ridiculous. C. Bottle flipping. Do it. Your bottle dies. D. Students who laugh or attempt to make fun of others if they get a question wrong. Classrooms are all about making mistakes, so that irritates the hell out of me. E. Lying. If I call you out on something you shouldn't be doing, just say, sorry, and stop doing it. You're highly unlikely to get in further trouble from me then. Saying, I didn't do that, is kind of insulting when I just watched you shove a handful of crisps slash chips down your gullet. It's also a guarantee I'll take it further. You know what, I like this one in particular for some reason. Mostly D, I think, because it's just, it just shows that OP really cares as a teacher. Like, as an educator, they take their job and role seriously. And I love that. I think that would also really upset me. Like, if you laugh at people every time they make a mistake, you know what that's gonna make them want to do? Not try. It's not gonna make them want to get, well, they might want to get better, but they're much more likely to just stop answering questions, which really doesn't help anyone. Story 16. I had a student one year who smelled awful. The moment he was in a certain radius, you'd get hit with a wave of BO that could knock you over. The smell was so bad that the next class would complain because his stank would linger. I felt bad because I actually liked him and thought he was nice. He had to have been bullied. I would see kids putting their shirts over their noses and I couldn't get mad at them. It was really distracting. I felt so bad because I also didn't want to go near him because he made me gag. We talked to his mom. The nurse gave him deodorant and said he could get some whenever he needed. They even offered to let him use the shower in the gym. Nothing helped. The kid doesn't care about hygiene. There may have been a reason why, like maybe he was abused or no one taught him how to wash, but the only thing that got rid of that smell is when the school year ended and I didn't have him anymore. Story 17. Student teacher here. I was teaching freshman bio at my old high school. This happened last winter. I had a student that would dress in all black, and he would always draw all over himself. Stuff like satanic stars, Nazi symbols, edgelord type stuff. He had the Lorax fan fiction for his background on his school laptop. No joke. He would cuss at me, never do his work. One time I handed him a packet and he threw it in the trash right in front of me and his special needs aid. I was a pretty chill teacher too. The kids threw a party and got me a card and cookies on my last day, so I know I wasn't that bad. He would always come to school with bandage wrap or a brace you can get at Walgreen, come up with some story of what happened, which were totally not true ever, such as, he fell off a three-story building doing BMX tricks, twisted my knee beating up my neighbor for trying to break into my house, hurt myself crashing my mom's stolen car after a high-speed chase with police, yeah, sure. Story 18. High school teacher here. I teach English as a second language. When I only just started teaching, there was this YOLO swag craze going on. I had this student who would just lean back on his chair and the only thing he would say is YOLO swag. This is a 15-year-old boy I'm talking about. I teach at a normal school and this boy had no special needs indications whatsoever. He was just acting like an idiot. In my country, we score tests from 1 to 10. 1 being the worst and 10 being the best. This kid's parents came to see me at parent-teacher meeting and demanded that I explained why the frick their innocent little boy had gotten a 1 on his test. 
They were sure he must have written down some correct answers, so do explain. Luckily, I always keep all the tests the students write for exactly these kinds of situations. I triumphantly showed him the test he wrote. He had drawn a huge plankton from Spongebob with a text balloon saying, Surprise, surprise, YOLO swag. This mom looked at it and asked me whether this was a joke. I said, no. And let's talk about your child's ridiculous behavior now, because I refuse to teach him when he acts out like this. I can tell you it was a long year with this kid in my class, and I was genuinely happy that I didn't see him in my classes again in the following years. He coincidentally just wasn't in the classes I taught, he didn't leave school or anything. I love my job and I can say I'm a good teacher who loves her students, but this kid really tested my sanity throughout the year. Story 19. Nightmare Kids. One kid named Leo couldn't sit for more than three seconds without popping up. I wanted to change my degree to child psychology just to figure out what was up with this kid. He would slap other kids, scream if you asked him questions, and disturb every classroom activity. Then one day he asked me for a feather, because we used them for experiments in class. I said no because I didn't want him to show it off to the other kids and then have to give a feather to everyone. He insisted, so I said yes, but only if you clean the whole classroom, and he did. After class was let out, I ended up passing by and seeing him and his grandpa out of the corner of my eye. He was using the feather to try to teach his drunk grandpa what we learned that day. Usually his grandpa was super strict, but this time he was laughing with the kid. I don't know what the situation was with his parents, but all I know is that day I realized that there was no such thing as a bad kid. Just good kids who need a chance to make the right choice. I did not expect to be emotional at this one, but that was a really sweet ending. I hope that kid's doing alright now. Sounds like he probably had a pretty decent reason for acting out. Story 20. Asking questions not on topic. I have this one student this year that does this and it's driving me insane. I'm teaching a unit on Holocaust literature, and every day he asks questions about other things in the middle of directions. These were all in the past week. What are plane tickets to Brazil? Can you overdose on cold medicine? Have you ever been to Japan? My favorite anime is Jojo Bizarre's Adventure. What's the classes? And every time I call on him, he states, I have a question. My question is a little off topic, but I think that's okay because I'm curious. My question is... I've stopped calling on him. Story 21. I taught university classes. The most annoying thing I had to deal with wasn't a student at all, but the projector, which broke and would flicker on and off every six seconds and couldn't be turned off. Three visits from IT support in one two-hour classes later, they finally just pulled the plug out and I had to teach the rest of the class without a screen to explain with. For students, though, it was the student who hadn't come in all semester, showed up the week the 60% assignment was due, and asked me to walk him through what he needed to do to get an A, having not started or looked at the assignment sheet. It was due at the end of the day. No, he did not pass. If you don't show up for class all semester, that's on you. Like, you can choose to do that. Absolutely, it's university. But you cannot expect to be handed a good grade when you have no idea what you're doing and refuse to read the materials. I also want to recognize, yes, it's possible. The kid could have had some stuff going on in life. That happens. You have to miss a lot of classes. The expectation, though, that you can come in and ask the prof what to do the day it's due? Yeah, I don't think so. Anyway, that is all the stories we have for today. I would like to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.